वेलकम बैक आफ्टर शॉर्ट ब्रेक वी आर अगेन रिज्यूमिंग यू माइंड हैव टेकन अ लॉन्ग ब्रेक ऑफ वन डेज बट वी आर रिज्यूमिंग हियर सो यू कैन सी द चार्ट दिस वी सॉ इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट रेवेन्यू एंड कैपिटल सो बिफोर दैट वी जस्ट रिवाइज वी वी सॉ वॉट वॉज काउंटर साइक्लिकल कैपिटल पॉलिसी वी रेड अबाउट इंडियन एक्सप्रेस दैट आर्टिकल that gdp had fallen down by 23.9% we also saw that how c i g x minus m all have to work together to sustain the level of gdp and to even grow right if one of them also falls especially if c falls because it has a 55% weightage then it becomes difficult for the government to sustain it right when we started fiscal policy we heard a short story about a person uh, you know going about his day to day life his problems with loans his problems with his job his problems with salary and uh, basically problems with money right so uh, after that we also we, we classified those we classified those kind of transactions into two one was the red ones and one was the yellow ones red ones were very frequent red ones were of a low amount of a uh, of a routine nature of uh, everyday use you can say every day or every month you know they uh, like water charges electricity charges you have to pay them regularly on a regular basis so that was the first one uh that was the red one second one the second one is a special one second one may what happens is that you do not uh, do it on a regular basis the amount is usually higher see the word is always usually because this is the nature there can be exceptions to everything there can be a routine transaction of a very high amount also but uh, or there can be a yellow transaction of a small amount also right so it all depends on the uh, nature of the transaction and then the most important characteristic or the very important distinguishing characteristic is that we have written in blue here is which is yellow one leads to owning something and the uh, red one does not lead to own something and we gave a name also red ones are known as revenue transactions and yellow ones are known as capital transactions is it understood is it agreed uh, is it uh, uh, like do you have any doubts no doubts so capital transactions revenue transactions revenue routine recurring frequent amount lower no not owning anything capital transactions on occasion amount owning something long term theek okay. hai do you agree now let me introduce you to another term we'll go one layer deeper let me introduce you to a term which is known as an asset what do you think is an asset this is a very common term but what do you, what do you actually mean by an asset in economics or in commerce or in accountancy what do you mean by an asset what do we mean uh, you know what do you mean when you say that um, air force is the asset of our nation or you know uh, the the kya bolte hai the military or you know this is the pride of our nation or they are assets of our nation what do you mean by asset asset is something which you possess or asset is something which you own and uh, you get benefit out of it theek okay? hai anything which you own which you possess which gives you benefit is known as an asset your vehicle is your asset your uh, mobile is your asset you might be reading in newspaper also assets of vijay malya sold or uh, assets of nirav modi seized so what do you mean by asset is asset is a uh, asset is a thing anything which you know gives you benefit anything which you have invested in anything which uh, gives you uh, returns be it monetary non monetary that is called as an asset okay in strict in strict terms you don't need to write this down but in strict terms an asset an asset just pay attention to the word an asset is anything from which expected economic benefits are expected to flow to you expected economic benefits are uh, uh, economic benefits are expected to flow to you you know an asset is anything through which benefits are expected to flow to you and the crucial the crucial thing which determines an asset is that the benefit which we are talking about see does car give you benefit yes does a mobile give you benefit yes the crucial thing which determines whether it is an asset or not an asset is that the benefit which you are talking about which which you are expecting the benefit goes for a longer period that is the crucial thing which means the benefit is not uh, only limited to one time see even eating one samosa will give you benefit of you know fulfilling your taste buds and your hunger but that is not an asset because one uh, the benefit is not expected to last for a long time it will last only for a while when you eat it and secondly assets are normally of a higher amount normally because they give you benefit for a long time so now you see around in your home your laptop your mobile phone is your asset your vehicle is your asset ac at home is our asset right what can be the asset of the country what do you think bridges are our, are our assets dams are assets even literacy is our asset 
इन अ मैटर ऑफ सेंस राइट बिकॉज लिटरेसी का बेनिफिट कम्स टू द कंट्री कम्स टू द पीपल कम्स टू द इकोनॉमी फॉर अ लॉन्गर पीरियड इट इज नॉट फॉर अ शॉर्ट पीरियड ऑफ टाइम ये सर नो वंस यू एजुकेट अ पर्सन ही विल गिव यू ही विल बेनिफिट योर इकोनॉमी एज अ कंट्री ही विल बेनिफिट यू बिकॉज ही विल ऑन हाई ही विल डू गुड जॉब ही विल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू योर जी डी पी आफ्टर ऑल ये सर नो ठीक है इवन इफ ही गोज आउट साइड ही कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू योर जी एन पी सम हाउ ठीक है सो दैट इज एन एसेट सो एन एसेट इज समथिंग विच विच इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू गिव यू बेनिफिट फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम राइट सो नाउ लेट एस लेट एस रिफाइन आर वर्ड्स लेट एस रिफाइन आर वर्ड्स ये समथिंग जो है दैट समथिंग इंस्टेड ऑफ समथिंग वी विल राइट एस ओन एसेट्स नॉट ओनिंग एसेट्स ठीक है वन लेयर डीपर एसेट्स English word asset is also more or less same. Asset is something which you possess, uh, which you can rightfully call your own. The only thing is that uh, so let us check. Let us check in yellow transactions. Activa, mobile, these are all your assets. Yes or no? So these result in creation of assets. I'm not talking about loan given, um, loan taken or loan given because I will. Ah, sir. What what do you uh, what do you think is loan given an asset? is loan given an asset yes why because you expected the ben you expect benefit from that loan in form of interest in form of emi you expect benefit from your friend to give you for a long period and it is not ki today you give him money tomorrow he'll give you back isn't it you expect it to be a long time okay so loan given is also an asset i'm not considering loan taken now even though they are yellow i'm not taking i'm not uh, uh, considering them now because we are going to go one level deeper ठीक है, we learned about asset. Asset is something which you own, which gives you benefit. ठीक है, now when you take a loan, when you take a loan, do you think the, uh, do you think कि you are going to get benefit for a long time or you have to give benefit for a long time or you have to give benefit to someone else for a long time? When you take a loan, you have to give benefit because see if you are giving a loan to your friend, you, it is your asset because you are going to get Uh, interest payment when you take a loan from your friend or from a bank you are expected to pay out money regularly right so it is that person's asset because he is getting benefit from you so what is it your in english economic accounts term we call it as a liability it is opposite to asset we call it as a liability again in english term what is a liability so we say uh, he know, you know he is a liability to the group which means ki uh, what we say he is a burden on the group you can say burden burden is a simple term burden is a simple english term it's a burden again the distinguishing feature of assets and liabilities are the benefit is expected to come in for a long time the benefit is expected or or rather the burden is expected to flow out for a long time If it is very short time, then it is not asset liability. Okay, I am I am simplifying this a lot to you. There are a lot of uh, details in it, but we don't need to go into that because that is accounting and that is uh, commerce. Okay, so asset liability. Did you understand what is an asset or a liability? So now I will give you some examples. You tell whether it is an asset or a liability. A a company purchased machinery worth rupees fifty lakh. Whether it is an asset or a liability, it is an asset because your, the machinery will give. uh benefits for it a company takes a loan from the bank worth 50 lakh for purchasing machinery worth 50 lakh now what is it the machinery becomes an asset the loan becomes a liability do you agree with me because the machinery will give you benefit but the loan which you have taken that is a separate transaction altogether you have to repay emi so the loan becomes liability the machinery becomes an asset do you agree with this take uh, take uh, your home examples also ki you have given a loan to some friend then is it your asset or a liability it is your asset you have taken loan from some friend you have taken a loan then it becomes a liability so can i say can i say ki this is an asset and this is my liability can i say very simple this is my liability so now now when i uh, when i write this or when i rewrite this when i rewrite this i will re i will change the terms now I will change the terms. Okay. Now, 
do you agree with this first of all it creates assets or liabilities you don't know no? you have taken loan also and you have given loan also so either it creates an asset or it creates a liability okay high level economics coming here create assets or liabilities it is nothing but you you get some long term benefit or you give some long term burden or you or there is a long term burden on you okay it results in creation of assets or liabilities and it does not creation result in creation of assets or liabilities same thing uska opposite simple so far straight forward technically we are on the 10th lecture today right since the beginning of question paper analysis syllabus analysis we are on the 10th lecture today okay and you feel that still we are on the second topic but these are the main topics i always teach main topics first and subsidiary topics and uh, all of that we can cover in one lecture one topic one lecture one topic hai na this is smart study if you if you uh, devote a lot of time to all the chapters then who the chapters which deserve more importance they lose out their value theek hai so so chalo tell me tell me one thing is it true or false is it true or false revenue transactions result in creation of assets or liabilities true or false revenue transaction result in creation of assets or liabilities it is absolutely false because capital transaction result in creation of asset or liability revenue transaction does not result in creation of asset or liability this is the english economics english which i have taught you it results in creation of assets or liabilities but for before that we need to know what is asset what is liability it gives you benefits or it gives you a burden theek hai capital done revenue done yes or no now we noticed now we noticed there are two sides to this one is paisa is coming in one money is going out one is money is coming in theek hai so we need to divide them so i can say i can say there are two on this side two colors on income side and two colors on expense side also yellow and red theek hai right so asset ho gaya liability ho gaya then we did what did we see we so we saw revenue yes and we saw capital yes or no which of them results in creation of asset or liability capital results in creation of asset or liability so i will just uh, color it theek hai now we saw that uh, in revenue when we look at revenue we saw that money is coming in also money is going out also did you notice in this transaction in this now only focus on revenue which means you only have to focus on red ones forget the blue ones uh, yellow ones salary coming in interest on loan given coming in interest on loans going out and food fuel and water going out so there are both money is coming in money is going out the nature is revenue for both yes or no do you agree so now we divide this into two parts money flowing in and money flowing out barabar hai so revenue see this is the nature of transaction again this is not income this is the nature of transaction which is revenue so you can say you can say can i say ki i am earning money can i call it as receipt receipt receiving you are receiving it is called as receipts theek hai and can i say i am spending it do you agree revenue receipts which means what recurring income revenue expenses which means what recurring uh, expenses your food expenses your daily ration or monthly ration expenses all of that will come under revenue expenses do you agree yes or no so let us call this as re let us call this as rr do not confuse receipts with revenue this is very confusing because this is also income the word connotates income this also connotates income but this is the nature this is the recurring nature of transactions this is na recurring nature of input transactions recurring nature of outgoing transactions theek hai barabar so far so good we also saw now focus on the yellow ones focus on the yellow ones what did we see that we have we see on the yellow ones that there are money is flowing in also money is flowing out also yes or no in yellow ones so can i say that even capital has this distinction capital also money is coming in from capital transactions also money is flowing out from capital transactions also so i will divide this also same thing same thing i will divide this as 
रिसीट्स एंड एक्सपेंसिस और एक्सपेंडिचर ठीक है ऑब्वियसली आई विल कॉल दिस एज सी आर आई विल कॉल दिस एज सी ई इज दिस क्लियर नाउ चलो वेरी क्विकली गिव मी एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ योर लाइफ वॉट कैन बी अ रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंस वॉट कैन बी अ रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंस वॉट डू यू थिंक सी अगेन दिस इज द नेचर दिस इज द इनफ्लो दिस इज द आउट फ्लो सो एनी थिंग विच डज नॉट फ्लो इन रेग्युलरली एनी थिंग विच यू डोंट गेट रेग्युलरली यू गेट वंस इन अ वाइल यू रिसीव वंस इन अ वाइल that is a capital receipt anything which you don't spend regularly which you which is of a big amount which is which does not uh, which results in creation of asset or liability expenditure capital expense now uh, very quickly give me an uh, give me an example of revenue expenditure or revenue expenses expenditure yeah, actually you can say expenses also uh, give me an example of from your personal life what is the example what can be the example of revenue expenses food fuel ration water electricity anything which you pay regularly theek okay? hai let's say you have subscribed for newspaper newspaper wifi charges everything will come under revenue expenses do you agree with this yes or no yes now what can be the example of revenue receipts in your life salary salary very important we also saw that the loan which we gave us pe we were getting interest so that is also of a small amount because loan is big but interest is small interest is just 1 percentage uh, 10 percentage 8 percentage on it and that we were getting monthly that we were getting regularly so that is an example of a revenue receipt do you agree with this yes or no very good what is a what is a personal example of capital receipt what do you think is the personal example of capital receipt personal example of capital receipt money is flowing in but money money is flowing in money of huge amount is flowing in uh, it does not happen regularly it is of a big amount and it results in creation of an asset or a liability acha one very very small thing very small thing this rule 99% of times ha huh, results in creation of an asset or liability 99% of times not always but mostly ekdam almost mostly almost 100% theek hai i'll tell you why ha huh. so capital receipt consider ki you are getting a big amount of money which does not happen regularly uh, it 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 almost results in creation of an asset or a liability can i say when you take a home loan you are getting a huge amount of money yes you are getting a huge amount of money can i say that that huge amount of money is resulting in creation of a liability because you have to pay that back it is resulting in a burden to you you have to pay the emi yes or no yes so that is an example of a capital receipt so i can say loan taken is an example of a capital receipt right now what about lottery what about lottery lottery does not result in creation of any asset any liability lottery is just you get money and uska uh, whatever you want to do you can do theek okay? hai lottery is also a capital receipt even though it does not create any asset or liability it is just a huge inflow of money because it does not happen regularly you don't earn lottery every day every week or every month and it is normally of a bigger amount theek okay? hai that is why i wrote 99% now what can be the example in your personal life of capital expenditure what can be the example of expenditure for simple terms you can write it in a pencil you can write this as inflow outflow inflow outflow for simple understanding because this don't take these words literally because normally expenditure means kharcha right but uh, when we talk about capital expenditure which means ki uh, huge outflow of money so what what creates a huge outflow of money uh, giving loan to someone you are giving huge loan 5 lakh rupees loan you are giving to someone what what else can you do uh, from your personal life do you think is there any other example that you can uh, remember or you can relate to or anything else sorry then yes buying car yes very good buying car theek hai buying car very good buying assets which means other things buying home theek okay? hai so buying home so when you buy a home home will be your capital expenditure but loan for that will be your capital receipt 
So you took one crore loan, one crore credited to your account. You wrote capital receipt. One crore you again gave it to the builder. You said that as a capital expenditure. ठीक है. Now tell me, in this, which of the four will create an asset or a liability? Which of the four will create an asset or a liability? Which ones? There is one, two, three, four. Which creates asset or a liability? These two. These two result because they are of a capital nature. So these two create asset or liability. Now you only tell me, receipt will create an asset or liability. Expenditure will create an asset or liability. Which of them? Receipt will create an asset or a liability. Expenditure will create an asset or a liability. You only tell me. Think and tell me whether receipt will create an asset or receipt will create a liability. Easier think from expenditure. First step, it will be easy. When you spend something huge, does it create an asset or does it create a liability? See, when you spend, you are acquiring assets, is it not? And when you receive a lot of money, you have more or most of the time it, it, it entails an obligation to repay it back. You, when you receive loan, when you take loan from someone, it is a capital receipt, but you have to repay it back. It is creating an obligation. It creates a liability. So now we have divided this further. I wrote in the definition that it creates asset or a liability because it is of a capital nature. But capital receipts most often, most often create a liability and capital expenditure most often creates an asset. Simple example, government incurring expenditure on bridges. Government doesn't do it every day. It is a rare thing. It is an occasional thing. It is a big amount. Bridges run, the cost of bridge runs in thousands of crores. So for government, it is a capital expenditure. And what is the asset which is being created? Bridge. Bridge is the asset which is being created. Okay. Understood? So the blue ones, this create assets or liability, but receipts create a liability because, because it carries with it an obligation to repay it back. And expenditure creates an asset because it carries with it some benefit which you will get for a longer period of time. This carries a burden, this carries a benefit. Is this clear? Is this distinction clear? Why it is called as capital expenditure? Why capital receipt? Why revenue expenses? Why revenue receipt? Okay. Now, why I told you 99% of the time, I will come to that. It, does, it creates asset or liability 99% of the time, I will come to that. In the two examples which we took, of what were the two examples which we took of capital receipts? What do you think? What were the two examples? One was we took a loan. That is a capital receipt because money is flowing in, but it is, sorry, but it is um, of a huge amount and it is of, what uh, do you Occasional, it is occasional. So money is flowing in, okay, very good, it is occasional, it is a capital receipt. Do you have to repay the money back? Yes, if you have taken a loan, you have to repay the money back. If you win a lottery, do you have to repay the money back? No, you don't have to repay the money back. Very good. So I can divide receipts, capital, especially capital receipts into two parts now. One where you have to repay the money back. Payback, yes. Which means it is a liability and payback, no. Do you agree with this? This chart will form the basis of your fiscal policy. Everything is covered here. When I go, when I go, uh, go through the budget documents with you, you will realize that these words we know. Okay. So some of them, in our example, lottery does. You don't need to pay back the lottery to anyone, but you need to pay back the loan. So in some cases, liability is created. In some cases, liability is not created. Okay. Coming to the terminology page. Coming now, keep that thought for a hold for a minute. Coming to a liability page, what do you think? What do you think is the meaning of the word? What do you think is the meaning of the word debt? This is not debt. This is not debt. Huh? B is silent here. B is silent. For those you don't know, it's okay. For, for uh, you know, B is silent here, so you call it as debt. It is just D E T. Like the pronunciation is DET, B is silent, so it is called as debt. Theke? What do you think is the meaning of debt? Chalo, you only tell me. What do you think? What do you mean by debt? I am not going to tell you. you I told you, you will teach me fiscal policy. 
वॉट इज डेट डेट इज कर्जा यू नो कर्जा कर्जा मीन्स अगेन अ फाइनेंशियल बर्डन कर्जा मीन्स और लोन टेकन यू कैन से अ फाइनेंशियल बर्डन विच यू हैव टेकन ऑन योर सेल्फ दैट इज डेट सो वी से ना कि ये यू नो इन हिंदी वी से कि ये कर्जा रहा तुम्हारा मुझ पे एंड सो ऑन तो विच मीन्स दैट आई ओ यू समथिंग और यू ओ मी समथिंग जो सम इफ इफ सम फ्रेंड डज यू अ फेवर यू नो ही गेट्स यू इन अ कॉन्सर्ट और समथिंग यू से कि नेक्स्ट टाइम यू कम आई विल हेल्प यू राइट सो वन वन डेट यू से सो आई एम इन डेट ऑफ यू डेट मीन्स कि बर्डन और यू कैन से कर्जा और यू कैन से लोन सो डेट इट्स अ नॉर्मल वर्ड डेट इट इज यूज इन इंग्लिश ऑल्सो इन इकोनॉमिक टर्म्स वेन यू टेक अ लोन यू टेक अ डेट ऑन योर सेल्फ विच मीन्स यू टेक द बर्डन ऑन योर सेल्फ वेन यू टेक अ लोन वेन यू गिव अ लोन वेन यू गिव अ लोन यू हैव गिवन डेट टू दैट अदर पर्सन दैट अदर पर्सन विल हैज द बर्डन टू रिपे यू ठीक है सो मोर और लेस यू कैन से डेट इज अ लाइबिलिटी सिंपल डेट इज अ लाइबिलिटी ठीक है नाउ वेन आई से कि डेट इज क्रिएटेड विच मीन्स एन ऑब्लिगेशन इज क्रिएटेड विच मीन्स अ लाइबिलिटी इज क्रिएटेड येस और नो तो डेट कैरीज विथ इट एन ऑब्लिगेशन अगेन दीज आर इंग्लिश वर्ड्स नॉट इकोनॉमिक वर्ड्स तो डेट कैरीज विथ इट सेल्फ एन ऑब्लिगेशन वॉट इज एन ऑब्लिगेशन रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी और समथिंग लाइक दैट जस्ट टू सिंप्लीफाई ठीक है ऑब्लिगेशन इज दैट आई हैव टू डू दिस आई हैव टू रीपे द मनी बैक सो सम ऑफ द मनीज विच यू रिसीव यू हैव टू रीपे दैम सम ऑफ द मनीज विच यू रिसीव यू डोंट हैव टू रीपे दैम राइट सो वेन वी गो बैक टू दैट चैप्टर टू दैट चार्ट ऑफ कैपिटल रिसीट्स पे बैक येस पे बैक नो सो कैन आई से पे बैक येस में can i say in payback yes now please pay attention can i say payback yes is debt creating because you have to pay it back then you have a burden on yourself and then it is it becomes your debt so it is a debt creating or liability creating you can say theek hai so it becomes debt creating but this does not become debt creating it is not a liability so we'll remove this from here we'll remove this from here we'll just just a minute theek hai can i write here non debt creating it is not debt creating can i write it here is it understood is it fairly understood it is very easy come on theek hai capital receipt capital expenditure revenue receipts revenue expenditure capital receipts can be either debt creating or non debt creating do you agree yes or no so debt creating i can write it as debt creating capital receipt or i can write this as non debt creating capital receipt theek hai it is nothing but short form theek hai debt creating capital receipt and non debt creating capital receipt sir how come you are saying capital receipt because this is all a part of capital receipt so first debt or obligation would be created because it is capital so in some transactions it will be created some transactions it will not be created example lottery and example loan taken yes so then what about assets can you divide this into assets yes but there are very few like i don't remember i don't recollect i had read but i don't recollect any example where it is a non debt create a non asset creating capital expenditure almost all capital expenditure results in creation of assets only ठीक है डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड ऑल ऑफ दिस द कलर शो दैट समथिंग एसेट और लाइबिलिटी इज क्रिएटेड दिस इज नथिंग बट अ लाइबिलिटी दिस इज नथिंग बट अ लाइबिलिटी एंड दिस इज नॉट अ लाइबिलिटी बिकॉज इन केस ऑफ लॉटरी यू डोंट क्रिएट अंडरस्टूड यस नो ठीक है सो नाउ वी नो दिस चार्ट सो रिमेंबर इन फिजिकल पॉलिसी वेन गवर्नमेंट ट्राइज टू गवर्नमेंट ट्राइज टू बैलेंस आउट द मनी गवर्नमेंट ट्राइज टू uh calculate ki how much money has it received or how much money has it spent what government is trying to do is is ki government gets a list of all transactions which are happening lakhs of transactions 
government tries to divide them into these things because everyone needs a separate analysis and that we are going to do now so government says ki how much is my revenue receipt how much is my revenue expense government says ki how much is my capital debt creating capital receipt how much is my non debt creating capital receipt and then government divides into capital expenditure theek hai now coming to government now coming to government uh, what do you think are the what is an example of revenue receipt for the government what do you think government receives regularly what do you think government uh, is of a little bit smaller amount for the government and what do you think uh, what kind of receipts or what kind of inflows government gets on a very recurring basis or routine basis what do you think taxes and remember in our example when you were driving without mask that police wala had also taken ठीक है दैट इज ऑल्सो रिकरिंग दैट इज अ स्मॉल अमाउंट एवरी डे फाइन्स आर कलेक्टेड बट इज वेरी स्मॉल चिंदी अमाउंट ठीक है मोस्ट ऑफ इज डू नॉट मेक इट बैक टू द गवर्नमेंट अनफॉर्चुनेटली सो कैन आई डिवाइड दिस कैन आई डिवाइड दिस इन टू टैक्स रेवेन्यू एंड नॉन टैक्स रेवेन्यू सो वॉट डू यू मीन बाई नॉन टैक्स रेवेन्यू वही वॉट एवर वी डिस्कस्ड पेनल्टी ट्रैफिक फाइन्स एंड ऑल ऑफ दोज थिंग्स राइट वेन यू गो टू नेशनल पार्क यू पे फॉर द टिकट पार्क एंट्री फीस एंड ऑल ऑफ दोस्ट बिकॉज आर नॉट टैक्स राइट टैक्स में क्या आएगा वॉट विल कम अंडर टैक्स डायरेक्ट टैक्स इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स डायरेक्ट टैक्स इनकम टैक्स ऑल ऑफ दैट इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स जी एस टी एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट ठीक है सो दैट विल गो इन टैक्स चैप्टर सो दिस एनालिसिस वी आर गोइंग टू डू इन टैक्स चैप्टर दिस टैक्सेशन वाला एनालिसिस ठीक है विच इज इमीजिएटली आफ्टर फिजिकल पॉलिसी चैप्टर सो वेन वी आर डन विद फिजिकल पॉलिसी विल इमीजिएटली मूव ऑन टू टैक्स चैप्टर बट I will take you deep in the tax chapter, but again we'll come back to fiscal policy because that has linkage with monetary policy. So, what temporary turn? Like it, we'll come back. Okay? When we do tax chapter, non-tax. Me, what are the other examples of non-tax? I gave you. Uh, I told you. Uh, uh, traffic fines, uh, park entry fees, water charges, which are collected by the government for water supply and all of that. If electricity supplied by government, then electricity charges. All of those come under non-tax. Okay? What are the examples of revenue expenses for the government? Any idea? What are the examples for revenue expenses for the government? Think, think. We'll go slow because this is the base of fiscal policy. If you don't understand this, then uh, it becomes very difficult. examples of revenue expenses examples of revenue expenses can i say subsidies because government it's not a big um, total it is a big amount but individually it is not a big amount it has a lot of transactions very recurring very frequent transactions and it does not result in creating of any asset or it, uh, creating of any asset because expenditure leads to assets we know that so this does not lead to asset so i can write an example as uh, subsidies any other example you can think of which is routine what about salary government gives salaries to ias officers routine salary small see if salary received you are writing it as revenue receipt salary expense is obviously your revenue expense theek hai anything else just recollect from our story were we giving anything else frequently to someone were we giving anything frequently to someone on a regular basis can i say interest on loans we have taken loans government also takes loans but government ka loans see see when government takes 1 crore rupee loan 1 crore rupee credited in the bank account of government how will government classify it here tell me when 1 crore rupee loan comes where it will come this 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 you only tell me government will classify it as what when government is receiving 1 crore rupee loan where it will classify it will classify it here because it is capital receipt because loans you don't get every day it is of a big amount theek hai now government now someone asks you ki sir idhar ya idhar what do you say sir this because loan hai you have to repay it yes or no theek hai so it becomes a debt creating capital receipt what do you think and when government is repaying that loan let's say forget interest for now when government will repay that loan where the government will um, where will the government show it when the government is repaying the loan where will it show it will show it as a capital expenditure why 
because it is a payment of loan. So, when loan came, you showed it as capital receipt. When loan went, you showed it as capital expenditure. It is repayment of loan, right? So, can I write here example as loan taken? Yes. Can I write here example as loan repayment? And bear in mind, we are talking about the principal amount of the loan, not the interest amount. We are talking about the EM installment amount or whatever. Okay, but do you think anyone will give you loan for free? No, because capital, remember factor of production, capital charges interest. So, interest will also come. But that interest is a small amount. That interest you have to pay regularly. That interest is a recurring feature. It is not a one-time feature. So, you will write that interest in your expenses. Interest on loans taken. Do you agree with this? The 1 crore rupee loan will come under debt creating capital receipt that when that 1 crore is repaid, it will fall under capital expenditure. On that 1 crore loan, if you are paying an interest of let's say 1 lakh rupees, then it will come under revenue expenses, interest on loans taken. Okay? Now, let's say India government gives loan to Bangladesh. Indians uh, regularly we give loans to Bangladesh. Where will we show it? Loans given kaha aega? Which kind of? Loans given, loan repayment, uh, loan, loan taken ka repayment hai na ye. Loan given will come under capital expenditure. Why? Why will loan given? Because you are giving loan to your friend here. You are expecting benefit out of it. So that is why it is an asset creating capital expenditure. Bangladesh government is giving you 50 lakh rupees as loan, uh, as interest per month. Where will you write that? Revenue receipt. Okay. So we write again non-tax only. So we write as interest on loan given, not taken. Interest on loan taken is here. Interest on loan given is here. Loan taken is here. Loan taken repayment is here. Loan given is here. So loan given repayment. When you are receiving repayment of loan, Bangladesh is giving your entire capital back. That will come here. Loan taken and loan given repayment. Okay, done, agreed. All right. So there are so many things here which are happening at the same time. One transaction is having so many impacts. That transaction is impacting here also. So let's say you took one crore loan, you you wrote it, you wrote it as non-debt creating capital receipt. Tomorrow you repaid 50 lakh, you wrote it as capital expense. But on that one crore, you are paying interest, you wrote it as your revenue expense. Okay, one transaction having so many facets, one transaction having so many angles and dimensions to it. Is this clear? Is this very, very clear? Because see, this is these are the words government uses. Baki, baki we don't care. Whatever government is using, these are the words government is using. Now, if I want to ask you out of all these, out of the entire board, how much is the debt? If I ask you out of the entire board, how much is the debt? What is the debt? How much is the debt? Kitna hai, kya hai? If I ask you, what do you think will be... Um, what do you think will be the response of the people? Of what? What is your response out of this fine debt? This, okay, is loan taken a debt or loan given repayment a debt? What is the debt out of them? Debt is your liability. Debt is your burden. So only loan taken becomes your debt. Loan given, you are given your friend loan. He is giving you back. That is not your liability. No? That is your asset which is coming back. So, only loan taken is your debt. Always remember this, only loan taken is your debt. Okay? So, when we do a debt analysis, ki government ke paas, how much is the debt? Government ke paas, what is the total level of debt? How much is it? Um, uh, how, much, how much loan is it taking? We'll talk about this figure. In the larger interest of things, we'll talk only about this figure. Okay? Now, I, now, one more question I ask you. This is a tricky one. We spend on defense. We spend a lot on defense. Yes or no? Do we spend a lot on defense? We buy weapons. We pay salaries to armed personnel. In fact, uh, we are the second largest or we are the largest army in the world when it comes to manpower. By manpower, we are the first or second largest in the world. 
नंबर ऑफ पीपल सर्विंग इन द आर्म फोर्सेस ठीक है सबका सैलरी एवरीथिंग डिफेंस एक्सपेंसेस कहाँ आएगा वेर विल डिफेंस एक्सपेंसेस कम वॉट डू यू थिंक वेर विल बी वेर विल डिफेंस एक्सपेंसेस कम आउट ऑफ द फोर वॉट डू यू थिंक वेर विल डिफेंस एक्सपेंसेस कम Now think. Now I give you what? Thirty seconds, forty-five seconds to think. Defence expenses. Where will go? Where will defence expenses come? That is very, very, very important to know. Think and tell me. Where will defence come? so first of all you should it is an expense so you should eliminate this and the third one because it is an expense you are doing kharcha so it cannot be receipt it cannot be receipt it is an outflow theek okay? hai now you will say capital expenditure because we are spending on machines we are spending on guns we are spending on armor theek okay? hai i would say you are wrong it will come under revenue expenses sir how come sir defense how come here sir we can it is asset creating sir we are buying tanks we are buying Uh, aircraft carriers we are doing so much of modernization sir still you are writing defense as your revenue expense i'll tell you the reason because more than 70% of the expenses are a result of salary and pension theek okay? hai it becomes difficult to uh, uh, it becomes difficult to distinguish between revenue and capital in defense within defense only and more than 67 to 70% of the defense expenditure whatever you see is on salary and pensions now if i ask you what is salary and pensions you will say sir revenue expense because it is salary hence we classify it defense as right these are the nitty gritties you will not find an exact classification of defense anywhere some books might show you ki or some websites might show you it is under capital but the reason is that the reason it is revenue primarily is because 70% uh, is uh, expenses is on account and you know that is the reason uh, in fact that is one of the topics or one of the small issues which we prepare in internal security you know internal security syllabus mein we prepare ki uh, we have to strengthen border areas we have to strengthen our military hardware and all of that but why we are not able to do it is because 67 70% of our budget goes in salaries and pensions only we are left with very less for modernizing we are left with very less for purchasing new jets and all right that is a problem which the uh, which finance ministry defense ministry and everyone are facing currently and that is an issue which might be asked in um, internal security not in economics much because it's a very niche thing but in internal security it might be asked ki how to reduce the uh, revenue expenditure component of defense and how to modernize defense system so that is something which you can prepare and that you know it keeps on coming border reforms military reforms armed force reforms all of this keeps on coming see when i say very casually that it keeps on coming or you will get the answer to all these questions it is only when you read paper each and every day without fail even if you fail to read one day's newspaper you don't know what you might lose theek okay? hai there is a lot to lose by not reading newspaper right so when i say casually ki ha this keeps on coming in newspaper or that is because i have read 365 newspapers in a day uh, in a year theek hai right so when i don't miss any newspaper which means i don't miss on any topics and also when i am reading newspaper i am very sharp very active to know that this can come under the syllabus this cannot come under the syllabus or they have asked a question like this or this can be written as an answer to a question which was asked like this and hence we spent three lectures doing only question paper analysis of economics reason being you your newspaper reading if you want to prepare excellent material excellent answers from your newspapers and if you want to um, really score well in your mains and understand the concept newspaper grasping and understanding is very important which can only be done when you understand the syllabus and the question papers theek okay? hai coming back capital revenue receipts expenses receipts expenses defense i have written here interest i have written here salary i have written here subsidy i have written here theek hai there are so many things here uh, which we are writing yes or no do we agree so let's say world bank gave, world bank gave us loan of 2 million dollars where would we write it that creating capital receipts so now you don't now you don't say capital receipts now we are to exp- like we are we are operating at a higher level now debt creating capital receipts theek hai 
Now, if I tell you that World Bank gives us money of two lakh rupees and World Bank says you uh, you performed very well uh, on your uh, economic reforms and hence take this two million dollars two million dollars. So we ask you, sir, do we have to sir? Is it a loan? We don't need loan. So World Bank says no, sir. It is not a loan. It is just a token of gesture. So you classify it as a non-debt creating capital receipt because there is no burden on you to repay it. Which brings me to very very important crucial words. We are again coming to our terminology chart. Very 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 crucial words. So we spoke about loan, given or taken. चलो ठीक है कोई बात नहीं. We spoke about loan, right? Then we spoke about winnings, lottery, which is non-debt creating. It is not debt creating, right? Now I use a word which is very important, which is used in our polity a lot. Now I ask you, that World Bank again next month World Bank called us and World Bank said, "Ki, uh, sir, we are giving you three million dollars." Then again the question comes whether we have to repay or we don't have to repay. If we have to repay, then it's a loan. It becomes debt creating capital. If we, if we if we don't have to repay it, then it does not become a loan, non-debt creating. So World Bank uses a word. World Bank says, "Ki, sir, we are extending you a three million dollar grant." A uh, three million dollar grant. We are extending you a three million dollar grant. Now, now the question is whether it is debt creating or whether it is non debt creating. What do you think a grant is? होता है ना we give you we are we are giving you a grant we are giving you research assistance grant होता है ना scientists are given three uh, like yearly budgets grants you know they can use it anyhow and they have to. Uh, conduct research from that money. Now, what do you think? Is the World Bank grant which we have received is it in the nature of a loan, so that we classify it as a debt creating capital receipt, or it is not a loan, so that we can classify it as a non debt creating capital receipt? So by now, I hope you know it falls in one of these two things, and it cannot be a third. It it cannot be a third thing. It is either debt creating, it is either non debt creating. So always remember this thing. Please drill this in your mind. That grants do not carry an obligation to repay. It is a grant. You can use it however you want. See, they might, uh, they might uh, carry some restrictions with respect to the end use. That you, you, you can use this grant only on researching uh, about soils. You cannot use it, use this grant on researching about weapons. World Bank will give you a grant to research on soils. World Bank will give you a grant for spreading farmer education. But uh, you say World Bank, ki, sir. But I need to modernize my military. World Bank says no. This grant is not for that. So grant might have conditions attached to it. Grant might have performance conditions attached to it. Ki if in the next thirty days we are able to, uh, let's say, reduce our expenditure, then only we'll get grants. Otherwise, we won't get grants, which is fine. These are called conditional grants. So grants can be conditional or grants can be unconditional. Ki enjoy, live your life. जा सिमरन जा जी ले अपनी जिंदगी है ना दे कैन बी कंडीशनल दे कैन बी अनकंडीशनल दे कैन हैव एंड यूज रिस्ट्रिक्शन बट दे डो नॉट कैरी एन ऑब्लिगेशन टू रीपे सो वंस यू रिसीव द ग्रांट यू हैव टू यूज इट एज पर द कंडीशन बट यू डोंट हैव टू रीपे इट हाँ इफ यू डोंट यूज इट एज पर द कंडीशन देन यू विल बी पेनलाइज दैट्स अ डिफरेंट थिंग बट ग्रांट्स डू नॉट कैरी एन ऑब्लिगेशन ऑफ रीपेमेंट विद दैम Is this clear? Now my question again remains: that whether this grant will fall under debt creating capital receipt or this grant will fall under non debt creating capital receipt. What do you think? It will fall under non debt creating capital receipt, right? So grants are always under non debt creating capital receipt. Always keep this in mind. So grants are always under. Grants. अच्छा दिस लोन गिवन रिपेमेंट विल नॉट कम हियर दिस विल कम हियर ठीक है बाय मिस्टेक आई रोट हियर बिकॉज इट डज नॉट क्रिएट एन ऑब्लिगेशन ना लोन गिवन रिपेमेंट ग्रांट्स लोन गिवन व्हिच मींस वी हैव गिवन एंड नाउ वी हैव रिसीव्ड द रिपेमेंट ठीक है डन सो ग्रांट्स आर नेवर इफ टुमारो वर्ल्ड बैंक आस्क यू टू रीपे द ग्रांट इफ देर इज अ स्पेशल काइंड ऑफ ग्रांट विच यू हैव टू रीपे इट 
So let's say uh, World Bank is extending extending you three million dollar grants, and World Bank says you have to repay, it, but not three million, but two million. You have to repay two million dollar grant. So what you will do? Two million you will write it as debt creating capital receipts. One million remaining one million which you don't have to repay, you will write it as non debt creating. Do you agree? It is all on the nature of transaction. Hence, this capital and revenue becomes important, and debt creating and non debt creating becomes very important. In Spanish, it is called as muy importante. It is very, very, very important. Very is M U Y, muy in Spanish. Okay, agreed. Let us move ahead. So, now coming to India. Now, what India, India follows a three structured polity. We have three tiers of government we have the central government or the union government, we have the state government, and we have the panchayati raj or municipal corporations, right? So now tell me if union government gives a grant, if union government gives a grant to state government, how will state government classify it? This, let's say this is state government received grant from union government. Very good. How will you classify it? Non-debt creating capital receipts. Grant is grant. Unless there are some repayment conditions attached to it, that's a different thing based on the nature, but grants will come here. Okay. State governments receive loans from union government frequently debt creating capital risk sir how much loans do states get how much grants do state get that is decided by finance commission there is a separate team of people who work for it and they tell the union government or the central government states need support give them grant states need support give them loans we are going to go through entire finance commission recommendations because it is very relevant and you can see if it wants to ask something from fiscal sector, financial sector, it will ask financial uh, finance commission recommendations. It is very uh, like very logical to study it, and uh, it is expected also that you should know all those things. Okay, done. Very good. Right? Revenue receipts, revenue expenses, capital receipts, capital expenditure, capital expenditure create assets. Loan taken, loan uh, repayment. A loan taken ka repayment might not create an asset, but loan given creates an asset. Debt creating, non-debt creating capital receipts. Grants come under non-debt creating. Loans come under debt creating capital receipts. Same happens in, in, in India also. When state governments give grants to the third tier, they th the third tier also will classify it as a non-debt creating capital receipt. Very good. Chalo. Done. Okay, clear, very good. Let us move on to the next part or the very important part of our chapter which we are going to see now. Achha, one very one very important thing we missed out. How can we miss this out? The biggest example of non-debt creating capital receipt is something which we missed out. Biggest example of non-debt creating capital receipt. What is the biggest example of non debt creating capital receipt? Let us spend some time on that. One of the biggest examples. So, see what happens is uh, do you know there are two sectors in the economy public sector and private sector? What do you mean by public sector? What exactly do you mean by public sector? Public sector are those firms, those companies which are owned either by central government or by state government or by third tier or a combination of these central plus state state plus state tier third tier plus third tier center center plus third tier state plus third tier any combination so what do you mean by own owning means ki you have an ownership of that company may not be complete ownership may be partial ownership so see every company again we are going to very low levels now not high level every company how do you decide who is the owner how do you decide who is the owner how much he has brought in money, he is the owner of that firm. See, tomorrow if you open a new shop along with your partner, if he is contributing 4 lakh rupees, you are contributing 10 lakh rupees. So, you are out of 14 lakh rupees, you are owner of 10 lakh and out of 14 lakh rupees, he has brought in 4 lakh rupees. Yes or no? So, out of the total ownership pool, out of the total ownership pool, let's say, so these are shares. Huh? So, which party holds how many shares? according to that ownership is decided. 
so if i tell you if i tell you a company has 100 shares if i tell you a company has 100 shares i own two shares you guys as a students you whole own 55 shares okay and the rest of the shares are owned by government suppose I own two, two shares, which means out of 100, I am owning two shares. I am 2% owner. You guys are 55% owner. Okay? And rest 43% is owned by government. Okay? 100 okay? Right? Now, how do you classify a company as a public sector company or how do you classify a firm as a public sector firm? I told you that the ownership lies with the government. Yes or no? Simple, the ownership lies with the government. In this case, is the ownership with the government? Yes, no, don't know. In this case, is the ownership with the government? Is government the owner of this company? Sir, how do you determine the owner of a company? I told you it is as per the shareholding or as per the stake, ownership stake. Is government having stake in the company? Yes, government is having 43% stake in the company. Is government, can government influence the decisions of the company? Can government exercise judgment on the company? Yes, but to the extent of 43%. So, if you take a voting of all 100, government comes, I come and you guys also come. We are all owners. We are all met here in a room. We are all owners, 100 people. We are there. There are 43 people from the government. There are 55 students and there are, let's say, two professors here. We are holding 2%. Now, to, do, to take any decision, what happens? Voting happens. If you want to take any decision, if, if you go with your extended family, big family to a restaurant and if they are confused what to eat, you know, voting happens. You will have this, you will have this, whatever majority decides, right? What is the majority in the number of shares? 100 shares are there, 50 is the majority. Okay? So, any, so 51, if there are 51 votes for a thing, then that, that resolution will be passed, yes or no. For example, if 53 people decide, you know, we should not, uh, we should not open a new factory or open a new branch then we then it will not go like that decision will stay because majority has decided simple even in politics it is majority only those who gets the majority of the votes india has a different system right fptp and all of that first past the post system please read polity ncrt class 11 and class 12 both okay indian constitution at work and polity the political theory or theory of polit political theory that chessboard wala ncrt that is very important and that red and yellow wala ncrt is also very important indian constitution at work 12th standard i think uh, or no both are 11th only if i'm not wrong ha anyways okay so similarly if there are 100 people in a room kiski chalegi who will who will influence the decision jo majority bolega wohi hoga right the others are called as minority Remember this word majority minority. Do you understand majority minority? So in our case, 50 percent is the cutoff. Yes or no? Now this, if 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 a company had 500 shares, then 250 would be the cutoff. Yes or no? If more than 250 people are voting for something, they would pass and they would win. Okay? Right? So consider this as 100 only. Right? So now, uh, do you think government can in, take a decision in the company? So, if all 43 people from the government come and say, Ki, we want to launch a new product. If all the students and all the professors say no, who will win? Who will win? Will the government win or will the others win? Others will win. Why? Because we have 55 plus 2, 57 percent uh, power. We have decision making power 57 percent. Okay? Government has only 43 percent power. So, hence this company will not be called as a government company because it cannot influence the decisions, it cannot control the decisions when, when, let's say some of you sold your shares to the government. So, ye kam ho gaya by 10 and this increased by 10 plus 10. Now, this becomes 53. This becomes 45. Now, what will happen? Government will bring in 53 people. Government can do anything it wants. It has majority then this company becomes a government company. Point being, it is not necessary for the government to own all 100 shares. If it can control the decisions of the company, then that company becomes a government company. Then that company is called a public sector company. Then that company is classified as a PSU, public sector undertaking. It is called as a PSU, public sector undertaking. Do you agree with this? Yes, no. It is very easy. It is very simple. If this was 2,50,000 shares, out of that, a 50% shares, Sorry, 51% shares are owned by the government, then it is a government company. Now, I will take you a bit, little bit more technical. Let us say government has 43, you have 55, I have 2. 
सेकेंड सीनारियो नहीं फर्स्ट सीनारियो में गवर्नमेंट कम्स गवर्नमेंट से इसकी वी शुड ओपन अ न्यू ब्रांच वी से नो वी शुड नॉट ओपन सो एज पर द नंबर वी शुड नॉट ओपन राइट बट लॉस इज और थोड़ा टेक्निकल आई एम टेलिंग बट द लॉस इज दैट बट इफ द गवर्नमेंट हैज अ मेथड ऑफ और अ वे ऑफ इन्फ्लुएंसिंग पावर इन एनी अदर मैनर इट डज नॉट हैव द नंबर बट इन एनी अदर मैनर लेट से इट हैज द पावर टू अपॉइंट ऑल ऑफ द डायरेक्टर्स ऑफ अ कंपनी इट हैज द पावर टू अपॉइंट द or to control the operations of the company then also it will be called as a government company this is just for information for our purposes of general studies we should keep in mind that any any company which has a 51% share holding of the government any company which in which 51% of the shareholders or shares are held by the government that will be called as a government company yes or no yes now how does government acquire shares what do you think how does government acquire shares either government can start a 100% company कि जिसमें ऑल शेयर आर ओन बाय गवर्नमेंट ओनली दैट इज हंड्रेड परसेंट कंपनी दैट इज ऑल्सो गवर्नमेंट कंपनी नाउ टेल मी वेदर दिस इज अ गवर्नमेंट कंपनी और नॉट गवर्नमेंट हैज फोर्टी नाइन परसेंट शेयर येस और नो इट इज इज इट अ गवर्नमेंट कंपनी और नॉट अ गवर्नमेंट कंपनी नॉट अ गवर्नमेंट कंपनी टेल मी इफ गवर्नमेंट हैज फिफ्टी परसेंट शेयर इज इट अ गवर्नमेंट कंपनी नॉट अ गवर्नमेंट कंपनी नॉट अ गवर्नमेंट कंपनी इफ ए गवर्नमेंट हैज सेवेंटी फोर परसेंट शेयर गवर्नमेंट कंपनी इफ अ कंपनी हैज हंड्रेड परसेंट शेयर गवर्नमेंट कंपनी इफ अ कंपनी हैज फिफ्टी वन परसेंट शेयर गवर्नमेंट कंपनी वेरी गुड ठीक है सो अच्छा कैन गवर्नमेंट इंक्रीज इट शेयर होल्डिंग येस इट कैन इंक्रीज बाय बाइंग मोर शेयर्स फ्रॉम द पीपल हू ऑलरेडी हैव इट सो इन आर सेकंड केस यू स्टूडेंट्स यू सोल्ड योर शेयर्स टू गवर्नमेंट यू रिड्यूस योर शेयर एंड यू एंड यू लेट गवर्नमेंट इंक्रीज इट शेयर्स ठीक है सो बेसिकली वॉट इज गवर्नमेंट डूइंग गवर्नमेंट इज इन्वेस्टिंग इज इट नॉट गवर्नमेंट इज इन्वेस्टिंग इन शेयर गवर्नमेंट इज पुटिंग इन मनी टू अक्वायर एडिशनल स्टेक ठीक है नाउ What is the opposite of investing? What do you think is the opposite of investing? Disinvesting. In the example, we saw that government had forty-three percent shares. What if the government wants to exit the company? It will share. Uh, it will sell those shares to you. Okay. Either I will buy, either you will buy, either some other buyer will come in place of the government. So in part forty-five minus five, will be minus ten, depending how much government is selling. If the government is selling entire stake, then all 43 will be sold. If a government is selling one share, then it will sell one share. Okay. So this selling of shares to someone else, anyone else, is called as disinvestment. This word is in news. This word is in fashion. This word is in trend because government is. So when you read in newspaper, government wants to disinvest in public sector undertakings, which means it wants to reduce its stake. ठीक है नाउ माय क्वेश्चन अगेन कम्स कि इफ माय क्वेश्चन इज इफ सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट सेल्स इट्स 43 शेयर्स इफ सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट सेल्स इट्स 43 शेयर्स लेट अस से 100 इन आर एग्जांपल 100 में 43 इज ओन्ड बाय सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट ठीक है 10 इज ओन्ड बाय स्टेट गवर्नमेंट राइट 53 हो गया 2 इज ओन्ड बाय लेट से मिस्टर एक्स and 45 is owned by mr y how many stakeholders are there here four x y central is this a government company is this a government company first of all is this a government company what is the definition of government company i told you 51% either by central government or by state government or by third tier by government or by combination it's a combination This is a government company because together, milke, they are holding more than 50 percent. Yes or no? See, within them, they might fight. Yare, what are you doing? But overall, they have 51 percent, 53 percent. So, if tomorrow central government and state government employees agree on something, they will have 53 votes and they will win. Okay? Second scenario: central government, central government transfers, central government transfers 40 shares, 40 shares. ठीक है टू मुंबई म्युनिसिपल कॉर्पोरेशन दैट इज आल्सो गवर्नमेंट है इन शॉर्ट इफ सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट ट्रांसफर्स 40 शेयर्स टू बीएमसी सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट का शेयर बिकम्स 3 इट अचीव्स 40 शेयर्स इज दिस अ गवर्नमेंट कंपनी इज दिस अ गवर्नमेंट कंपनी नाउ इट इज अ गवर्नमेंट कंपनी बिकॉज़ 40 प्लस 10 प्लस 3 ऑल 3 टियर्स बिकम होल्डर्स इन दिस थिंग ठीक है कैन वी से कैन वी से central government central government 
has this invested in this company can we say that think and tell chalo can we say central government now we are talking about central government can we say central government has this invested in this company absolutely yes central government has this invested or divestment it is also called as divestment this investment or divestment central government has reduced its stake bmc has invested central government has disinvested in the company yes or no do you agree with this barabar hai simple theek hai 40 10 3 2 45 theek hai central government has this but but despite this investment by central government does the ownership control uh, does does it change the company from a government company to a non government company no it does not because the purchaser is also government some other form of government some other people of government right bmc and state government bmc and state government now decide bmc and state government now decide to Uh, so BMC has acquired 40. Uh, let's say Mr. Ambani approaches BMC and Mr. Ambani says, "Okay, I want to buy your 40 shares." Okay, which is fine. Mr. Ambani will buy 40 shares. What will happen in that case? Mr. Ambani will have 40. He will have 45. He will have two. It does not become a government company. Do you realize this? Okay, it does not become a government company. So now, currently, how much is the government shareholding? 40 plus 10 plus 3. 53 है ना एंड नॉन गवर्नमेंट कितना है 47 इट इज स्टिल अ गवर्नमेंट कंपनी वेरी गुड नॉन गवर्नमेंट 45 प्लस 2 47 इन द सेकंड सिनेरियो मिस्टर अमानी अप्रोचेस बीएमसी एंड सेस के आई वांट टू बाय योर शेयर बीएमसी एग्रीज सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट शेयर कितना है 3 स्टेट गवर्नमेंट शेयर 10 रिलायंस शेयर 40 एक्स शेयर 2 वाई शेयर 45 Central government stake, how much? Is, sorry, government stake is 10 plus 3, 13, बराबर, and the rest 87 will go to private persons. Is it a government company now? It is not. Who disinvested now? Who invested? Who disinvested? Reliance invested. BMC disinvested. Did central government disinvest? No. Central government is three. Central government is three. In initial stage, it disinvested, but buyer was BMC. But but in the first scenario, nothing changed. It remained a government company. In second scenario, it became a private company now. Okay. What what was the crucial element here? Majority share. Yes or no? Because yahan pe government has a has a majority share in spite of selling and buying. Here the government does not have a majority share after selling. Right? In both cases, did govern. Now consider this as one only. In both cases, did government disinvest? Yes. Here, central government disinvested. Here, BMC disinvested. In both cases, disinvestment happened. But only in this case did the govern. Did the government cease to be? Did the company cease to be a government company and became a private company? But in this case, the company remained government company. What is the difference? The difference is, the difference is, stake sale of. Less more than fifty percent, yes or no? Because here the government still held more than fifty percent. Here it did not hold fifty percent. So, did this investment happen in both the case? Yes, this investment happened here. This investment happened here. This is a special this investment, yes or no? Because here your nature is also changing. After this, after this, if state government also sells some shares to someone else, is it this investment? Yes. Because this investment is nothing but reducing your share, ठीक है? But it still remains a private company. What will happen if X Y, if X Y share the uh, sell the shares to central government? What will happen? Forty five plus two, forty seven plus three, fifty हो जाएगा. Fifty plus ten, sixty, ठीक है? It will again become a government company. Yes or no? By way of investment, private person has disinvested, government has invested. बराबर है? Simple. so this kind of disinvestment which results in a government company becoming a private company this kind of disinvestment which results in government shareholding to reduce below 50% is known as strategic disinvestment 
is known as strategic. Now, do you understand why it is called strategic? Because it results in loss of control. It results in loss of control. Here you were in the control even after disinvesting. Here you are not in control. Here Mr. Ambani and other XYs are in control. Right? This is known as strategic disinvestment. Only the second scenario is called a strategic investment, disinvestment. Others are all disinvestment. Okay? Others are all burgers. This is known as cheeseburger. Special. Strategic disinvestment. So, how do you define or how would you write in your answer what is strategic disinvestment? Strategic disinvestment is loss of government control in the company. Simple, one line, finish. Loss of government control. You will not say sale of shares by the government. That is disinvestment. Strategic disinvestment is loss of government control in a company due to sale of shares, of course. But the crucial matter here is loss of government control. If there is no loss of government control, there is no strategic disinvestment. Do you agree? Yes, do you agree? So, now when we read in papers that government is pushing for strategic disinvestment, we know that it wants to sell off its stake to below 51%. Now, I will give you certain scenarios. Okay? Government is holding 100% shares. Okay? Government is holding 100% shares, scenario 1, and government sells, sells, so 100 minus 49. Government sells 49% shares. Is it a strategic disinvestment? No. Why? Because the resulting is still 51. Abhi hum zinda hai. You know, in welcome he says, now we are alive. Right? Second case study, you will understand very easily. Government has 51% shares. It sells 2 shares. Is it a strategic disinvestment? Yes. Why? Because the resulting figure is 49%. It does not matter how much the government is selling. It does not matter how much the government is selling. Even 2% can result in a strategic disinvestment. Even 49 will not result in a strategic disinvestment. The key term here is, see this is all, again this is one thing where students often get confused. See, what is strategic disinvestment? It is not a big share, uh, stake sale. It is just when the moment you lose the, con lose the control, the moment you cross the Lakshman Rekha, that is when you have done a strategic disinvestment. That is when you have done a strategic sale. It can be called as a strategic sale also. There are various terms for uh, in our study because this is not um, science. You know, there is only one metal term or one alloy term. This is not that. There are various terms. It can be called strategic sale. It can be called strategic disinvestment. Whatever name you want to call it, you can give. But it is strategic. Why it is called strategic? Because it results in a loss of control. Okay? It results in a loss of majority. Right now, now if I tell you, government wants to buy an ownership stake in Tata Motors. What does it mean? Government wants to buy an ownership in ownership stake in Tata Motors. What does it mean? It wants to reach 51% minimum. If it already has 49%, it will buy just 2% shares and it will become the owner. If it has 0%, it has to buy 51% to become the owner. Ownership stake. Okay. It is not necessary to have 100% stake to become an owner. Right. Huh. If you have 100% stake, then you will be called as a 100% owner, right? Then you will be in majority, you will only be in minority. You are, you, you are the only one, aap hi ho. Okay? So, we saw what is strategic disinvestment, we saw what is disinvestment, right? And this is what government has been trying to do. We will see budget policies also, we will see a few budget policies where it is actually explicitly, specifically mentioned that the private uh, the disinvestment policy will be followed as one two three four and only the only some public sector undertakings would be kept for uh, our uh, this thing kya bolte hain? would be kept for uh, government use or government control and other than that so if i want if i tell you a statement that government wants to disinvest in 10 entities okay government wants to disinvest in 10 entities which means what is the target shareholding what is the target shareholding government wants to achieve? If I tell you government wants to disinvest in those 10 companies, which means ki what is the resulting shareholding value government wants to achieve? 
it can be anything from 0 to 49 percent and it can hold 49 percent also because that is also disinvestment it can hold 0 percent also pura base though sell full today it is holding 100 percent sell it completely to private person no problem it is called as strategic disinvestment samjha theek hai and and coming back to fiscal policy do you think government when it reduces this 40, 100 say 49 do you think it will give for free enjoy my shares it will it will ask for a huge price also okay so they are called as disinvestment proceeds which means you the money which you get after disinvesting see you sell your shares you will get money right so government has a lot of shares in a lot of public sector undertakings government also tries to disinvest government also tries to reduce the share Achha, if government already has 35 percent share which means it is not a government company and then government sells uh, 25 percent stake it is not is it disinvestment or not disinvestment it is disinvestment okay anything it is not strategic disinvestment because you do not have the power only will government get money for that share sale of 25 percent yes okay so is government getting money right from share sale now how would you classify it in our bigger picture of things now my question is how would you classify it in this government the money which government gets from share sale from disinvestment in psus what do you think how would the government uh, classify this or how would the government uh, record this in its books what do you think kya ho sakta hai? what is the possibility here so pehle to you should know ki whether it is a receipt or whether it is an expense which means whether it is inflow or outflow so money is flowing in right so just forget ki it is an expense so second and fourth gone it is a receipt somehow now whether it is a revenue receipt or a capital receipt if it is a capital receipt then whether it is a ndcr or whether it is a dcr dccr think and tell i'll give you a minute i'll we'll stay silent ek minute ka mon rakhenge hum but think and tell Hmm. So, we are we are now in either in receipt or uh, sorry revenue receipt or capital receipt. So, revenue receipt what is the nature it is revenue it occurs every day it is of a smaller amount and it is routine in nature disinvestment is not routine in nature okay this gone finished. Now, we come to capital receipt DCCR or NDCR government does not have an obligation to repay na? when it is receiving that money it is sharing its own stake it is not. Uh, going it, it does not have to it is not collecting someone else's money on loan and then giving it so it is it will form under ndcr and this is the biggest example of ndcr which is disinvestment proceeds and i am writing it in a different color because it is the most important uh, this thing in our fiscal policy study disinvestment proceeds proceeds from disinvestment is ndcr sorry is it clear बराबर है राइट डू यू रिमेंबर द चार्ट विच वी मेड सी प्लस आई प्लस जी प्लस एक्स माइनस एम डू यू रिमेंबर द वेव्स विच वी ब्रॉड 
and we know that government tries to pull it up if it is going down and it is a counter cyclical capital uh, fiscal policy it is keynesian economics everything is fine theek hai how does it pull it i gave you only one tool it is called as a increase in tax or decrease in tax control of tax theek hai i gave you only one tool during that time so there are two major players who try to do this there are two major players who try to pull the economy up when it is going down and who try to uh, push the economy down when it is going a lot of odd raha hai when it is going up theek hai there are two major players in the economy who can you guess who are the major players who try to do this can you take a guess who are the major players who try to do this one is rbi theek hai one is rbi who does this because it also has the mandate of controlling the economy or regulating the economy and second is the government theek hai so whatever the the tools which rbi uses to control the economy the tools which rbi uses to manage the economy they form a part of monetary policy theek hai why because rbi is the monetary policy authority of india and the tools which the government uses they are called as fiscal policy the entire budgeting which is done the entire uh, classification which is then why are we doing all this because we want to know where to pull see you want to pull the economy up remember it is going down you want to pull the economy up. but how to pull where to pull how much force say you have to pull kahan tak you have to pull till how long you have to pull that all is decided by this chart that all is discussed with this theek hai this is the entire basis of your fiscal policy so we are moving on to the next next uh, aspect of our chapter and that uh, Before that again, simple terms, simple terms. Me, पहले समझ लो. In our story of uh, our person who was earning salary, who then later went into problems, and you know, so the basic rule of finance, which I want to tell you, the basic rule. अच्छा, which is short term and which is long term in this? These both are short term in nature. These both are long term in nature. Yes or no? so the basic rule of finance ekdam basic ekdam ekdam basic the ekdam basic beginners rule of finance which uh, which you should know is that you should never use your short term income for long term expenses this is the basic rule of finance which means you should not use your regular salary to buy something which you cannot afford to you cannot use your salary of 50000 per month to buy a car worth 10 lakhs theek hai you should never use your regular finance or regular income to finance your regular uh, long term expenditure what do i mean by that is ki small expense ko uh, like small revenue use for small expenses theek hai what is your small what are your small expenses food water electricity all of that that you pay from your salary if you want to really buy a car or if you want to really buy a home then you have to save or you have to take a loan yes or no loan you can take and you can do big kharcha car loan home loan all of that you have but you cannot use your short term receipts to finance your long term expenditure why because this will take time to give you benefit and this will get over instantly and then you will not be able to meet this theek hai this is the basic rule of finance ki you have to meet the durations you have to meet this kharcha from this receipt you have to meet this expenses from these receipts because these are also short term these are also short term these are long term these are long term then you will be able to meet why because when you take a home loan of 10 years then 10 years tak you have to repay little 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 which means that you can save little 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 and then repay constantly right similarly these are your daily expenses so use your income daily income monthly income to fulfill your daily expenses otherwise if you put this here then you won't be able to save and this will be in jeopardy expenses daily survival will be in uh, danger theek hai same thing same thing government has to follow or same thing government has to take care of it cannot use its revenue receipts to finance its capital expenditure it cannot use why because if it uses all of its taxes and invest in bridge bridge takes 10 years to complete remember bridge takes 10 years to complete bridge ka toll will come after 10 years that benefit which is expected to flow because it is an asset after 10 years but what if you finish all your revenue receipt then what about these who will pay salary who will give subsidy who will give interest on loan who will give defense so government says ki theek hai 
I will use capital receipt, I will borrow and then I will construct a bridge because that borrowing I have to repay in 10 years and this after 10 years I will start making money and I will match. Okay? There is a term called as asset liability mismatch. We will come to that in banking chapter. Please keep in your mind. I have given you two terms to remember. One was capital uh, counter cyclical capital conservation buffer CCCCB and second I am telling you asset liability mismatch. Both of them we will do for do under banking chapter. Okay? Again in that also I will come back to this only. Okay? So, that is the first rule in financial policy or fiscal policy which we have to know. Right? Now, is there a possibility that you are earning 40,000 per month and your regular kharcha are more than 40,000? Is it possible? Yes, it is possible because if you live in a big house, lot of light bill is coming. If if you know your family members or you used to are used to ordering every day from outside, food from outside, it becomes costlier. So, every, every day let's say you order food worth rupees 2,000 from outside. In 30 days, how much you will spend? 6,000. Nee, kitna hoga 30 days? 60,000. Okay, 2000 every day is 60,000. Your salary is 40,000. You cannot afford to do that. Yes or no? Is it bad or is it good? It's bad because you are not able to meet even your daily expenses from your daily receipts. Forget that. Oh, that is a long term dream now. Saving ni or a negative savings, right? You are not able to meet this out of this. Forget that. You should be able to meet at least this out of, uh, you should be able to sufficiently accumulate revenue receipts to uh, meet your revenue expenses. Yes or no? At least your daily kharcha should go with your income, monthly income. Yes or no? That is the survival. Otherwise, you won't survive. And then iska surplus, whatever will be left, will be saved, 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 saved and then you can use it for that. Barabar, agreed. Government also wants to find out whether it is able to, whether it is able to meet revenue expenses from revenue receipts. Government also wants to find out ki whether my subsidy, salary, interest on loan, defense, whether that can be met out of tax, non-tax revenue or not. Government wants to know this, okay? And for that, chalo, how will you calculate it? How will you calculate whether this is sufficient for this or not? How will you calculate it? If I tell you your salary is 40,000, your expenses are 55,000, how will you calculate whether it is sufficient or not? You will say, sir, it is not sufficient because expenses are higher. Yes or no? How much? 15,000. 55 minus 40, 15,000. Expenses are higher. What did you do? What did you do? Which mathematical operation did you do? You took salary, uh, sorry, you took your kharcha first. Ki I have 55,000 kharcha. See, always remember whether you have to find out the shortfall. Okay? So, you, you took your salary, uh, sorry, kharcha and you took your monthly salary 40,000. And then you said ki 15,000. But what is this 15,000? Is it a surplus or is it a deficit? What is it? What is this 15,000? Is it more or like more than your kharcha or less? It is less. It is a deficit, is it not? Deficit matlab kamti na? It is less. Yes or no? So, you are you are telling ki sir, your expenses are 55,000 per month. We are talking about short term only now. Forget long term. Sir, your expenses are 55,000. Your uh, income is 40,000, 15,000 you are falling short. Okay, 15,000 you are falling short. That is very important. Okay, what did you do here? Did you take revenue receipt or revenue expense here? What did you take here? This 55,000 is your expense. What did you take here? Receipts. What is this deficit? It is a deficit, right? But of revenue nature? Revenue deficit. Merely by hurting the formula does not work. You are trying to find out whether you are able to meet your daily kharcha from your daily income or not. Okay? What does a positive figure indicate here? Is positive a good figure or a bad figure here? It is a bad figure. Why? Because it is showing deficit. It is showing deficit. Okay? This is your cutoff and these are your marks. If it is positive, which means you are scoring less than the cutoff and then it is bad for you. If if you score 135 and if the cutoff is 110, then you are in surplus. Then 110 is the cutoff minus 135 that you scored, resulting is minus 25, which is a good thing for you. So, always remember when we study deficits, positives become bad figures because it is deficit. 
हाँ इफ आई आस्क यू की कैलकुलेट द सरप्लस देन हाउ विल यू टेल फिफ्टी फोर्टी माइनस फिफ्टी फाइव माइनस दिस बट दैट इज नॉट हाउ वी डू इट यूर वी कीप फिफ्टी फाइव माइनस फोर्टी ओनली एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट सरप्लस लेट से इफ दिस इज सिक्सटी देन यू शो इट एज नेगेटिव ठीक है सो नेगेटिव डेफिसिट इज सरप्लस राइट तो डेफिसिट्स में जस्ट कीप द साइन इन माइंड कि पॉजिटिव साइन इज नॉट अ गुड थिंग एट ऑल इट इज अ बैड थिंग ठीक है फर्स्ट टाइप ऑफ डेफिसिट वी लर्न विच इज रेवेन्यू डेफिसिट इट इज नोन एज रेवेन्यू डेफिसिट दिस इज वन ऑफ द फोर और फाइव डेफिसिट वी विल लर्न आई एम गोइंग वेरी स्लोली बिकॉज लॉजिक इज द ओनली वे टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस लॉजिक इज द ओनली वे there is no other way to understand these deficits samjha kya bola yes everyone now now you can take a break of 2 minutes if you want you can go and wash your face and come because now i am going to teach you something very important theek okay? hai so you can pause your video here and then you can resume but i wanted to i want to teach you something very important after revenue deficit something very important comes i will tell you a short story for that and uh, you have to know this so from where will the government bring in money to to finance revenue deficit from where will so if government is having a revenue deficit then what will it uh, do you know because daily kharcha is more than daily income what does it do and all we are going to see that before that before that very important is to know so this is one of the deficit can i do one more thing mere ko agar if i want to know the overall deficit what can i do i will take total of my revenue sorry total of my receipts receipts plus receipts i will take total of my expense plus expense and then i will find out deficit yes or no what is the formula for deficit expense minus receipt not receipt minus expense because it's a uh, negative figure right matlab deficit figure hai so what i will do for total deficit what i will do i will take receipts plus receipts minus expense plus minus expense barabar yes or no do you agree if i want to find total sabka deficit kitna hai whatever i have so this is so let's say you earned revenue receipts itna you took loan and all itna uh, you won lottery and all itna this is your daily kharcha and this is your capital expenses so then you will add both your incomes and reduce both your outflows and then you will come to know are this is not not working or this is not sufficient to meet my expenses barabar hai yes right so now revenue ho gaya capital ho gaya now i will ask you something i will ask you a question you have not yet taken a loan chalo you have not yet taken a loan you are you know your your expenses are all messed up your accounts are all messed up ghar ke accounts home accounts you sit down and you sort through all your expenses you sort through all your incomes you don't even know kahan ka what what all income you have you see the smss you check your email you check everything and then you come to know and you make a list and you try to categorize them into these four parts theek hai Uh, right uh, but you have not taken a loan when will you take a loan when there is a deficit do you agree with this you will take a loan when there is a deficit see if you are earning 2 crores per month as salary you can buy a new home of 1 crore that in that salary only theek okay? hai you don't need to wait for it and you don't need to take a loan for it agreed so chalo if i give you a task of finding out the amount of total deficit you have amount of total deficit forget revenue forget capital what will you do what will you do how will you find out see you have to find an amount of deficit which means you have to reduce your uh, incomes from your expenses so first of all what you will do you will take iska this expense plus this expense ki what is my total expense first of all if i want to find the deficit if i want to find whether i have enough money or not you make a list of all your expenses wifi itna books itna whatever theek hai so can i write as so 
टोटल एक्सपेंसेस हैव टेकन राइट ठीक है टोटल एक्सपेंसेस है टोटल एक्सपेंसेस टोटल एक्सपेंसेस सो व्हिच मींस व्हाट आई एम डूइंग बेसिकली व्हाट आई एम डूइंग एग्जैक्टली आई एम टेकिंग माय रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंस ठीक है डोंट राइट दिस डाउन आई आई विल सिंपलीफाई द फार्मूला इट इज नॉट अ फार्मूला बट जस्ट व्हाट यू विल डू कंसेप्चुअली व्हाट यू विल डू यू विल टेक योर टोटल एक्सपेंसेस यू विल टेक योर टोटल रेवेन्यू and so whatever is remaining you will go and take a loan yes or no assuming you cannot reduce your expenses you cannot increase your income theek hai if you notice that your monthly outflow is 80000 rupees if and your salary is 60000 rupees 20000 you will have to borrow from your parents or bank or your friends or anyone right similarly if i ask you to tell you ki total tell me don't forget don't tell about revenue total tell me how much are you uh, earning and how much are you ex- spending on so you will also say ki my ghar ka kharcha is 1 crore rupees my car expenses are 15 lakh rupees my food expenses are let's say 5000 rupees per month my wifi expenses you will add everything all expenses you have because you want to know it on a total level so you will take revenue expenses all of those small small things will you add capital expenses to it yes because you are you want to know total how much you are in the balance yes or no this is nothing but total expenditure do you agree with this can we call it as total expenditure yes very good what will you reduce now what will you reduce from this pehli baat to you will reduce do you agree because you will receive uh, you will reduce whatever you are earning now what are you earning now what are you earning now you are earning revenue receipts are you earning revenue receipts salary interest on loan given or see we have not taken a loan now but you are earning salary and all of that theek hai right if then you are you have also won a lottery i have i have told you that you are not taking a loan now but you have won a lottery let's say so can i write capital receipts also here because you will use it for your kharcha na lottery is lottery you will use it for your kharcha so can i write it as capital receipts also here yes or no so all your total revenue receipts all your total capital receipts you will add and you will compare it with all your revenue expenditure and all your capital expenditure and you will get total deficit or surplus yes or no let's say you find a deficit what happens now you will borrow because assuming you can't reduce this assuming you can't increase this okay we'll come to that later but you will borrow do you agree with this yes or no okay in the next lecture we are going to perform calculations i am going to ask you calculate revenue deficit i'll give you a set of figures you have to calculate and you don't have to remember the formulas you only have to go by logic so what will we do first first we went ki what is my total expense chalo total batao yaar revenue capital then can i tell this is my total revenue yes or no theek hai and then i will get a surplus deficit or budget theek hai we have not borrowed yet we have not borrowed yet so this capital receipt why did we take it here because we have not borrowed then how are we counting capital receipt here borrowing is a capital receipt why are we taking this here because i gave an example of lottery theek hai lottery money you will use here na so don't worry but borrowing you have not done yet theek hai because when you find deficit you will know na how much to borrow theek hai so assuming you have not borrowed yet so i will change this and i will write this as non debt creating capital receipt special special na borrowing we have not done so our capital or our debt creating capital receipt is zero now so even if you add debt creating capital receipt in our equation it is zero because i am telling you you have not borrowed yet but you have won a lottery theek okay? hai non debt creating capital receipt or your friend is repaying you the loan you had given that loan some 5 years back you are getting the repayment back you will use that to use your kharcha you will add it to your non debt creating capital receipt but it is non debt theek okay? hai because we are not yet borrowing it theek okay? hai do you agree with this do you agree with this now if i tell you iska answer is 10 lakhs if i tell you iska answer is 10 lakhs what does it mean that are you running in a surplus of 10 lakhs or are you running in a deficit of 10 lakhs deficit of 10 lakhs now you will ask your spouse you will ask your parents you will ask your friends you will ask your bank to give you this 10 lakhs because you want to finance this your own sources of income lottery ho loan repayment ho existing loan given which is repaid to you 
or your normal salary and all is not enough to meet your daily lifestyle expenses and your aspirations of owning a house and owning a car yes or no yes or no theek hai this is known as this is known as fiscal deficit when we read fiscal deficit is 3% ya jo bhi hai i'll tell you what that percentage means but this is fiscal deficit it is government's total revenue sorry total kharcha whatever government wants to do see government wants to plant 10 bridges government will say ki usme i will incur 150000 crore rupees government wants to do expenses on salary subsidies uh, defense and all of that theek hai pension payments and all of that government will say ki itna to i cannot reduce i have to do this kharcha then government will say ki from taxes how much i am gaining theek hai and government is also then calling up bangladesh pakistan and every country ki soon please repay the loan which i have given because now i need money so they give money right government also gets grants remember grants always remember grants government also gets grants and uh, all of those are coming here right and uh, then uh, what you do is uh, you calculate capital you also take capital receipts into consideration why because they are loan repayments the loan which you had given they are being repaid but you are not borrowing yet you are just looking ki what is my present status mera kya hai whether i am in surplus or deficit theek hai unless you know ki you are in a deficit of 30 marks from the cut off you are not going to the guidance or you are not taking extra coaching yet you are just knowing your present status so you take non debt creating capital receipts and you take revenue receipts here and then you find out that you have a deficit of some amount and that is known as fiscal deficit what will you do if you want this 10 lakhs what will you do will you borrow yes or no yes this is to be borrowed from whom to borrow that is fine we are going to discuss that but now till now is this understood so let me rewrite this formula as it is written in the books because this is a simpler version of it so what i will do is i will write the formula for fiscal deficit is total expenditure minus revenue receipts plus non debt creating capital receipts this is the formula for fiscal deficit but do you understand the logic for fiscal deficit it is the government's present status ki kitni lagi hai hamari you know how much are we screwed that is fiscal deficit so if it is high which means lag gaye if it is low which means good performance theek hai then with this calculation government appro government approaches rbi and other banks ki sir please sir we want to spend it here we want to give sir bacche khana nahi khayenge people will not eat food we want to give salaries we want to give subsidies and all of that and then you borrow it so what do you think a high fiscal deficit is good or a low fiscal deficit is good a low fiscal deficit is good why you know there is a separate debate we are going to do on fiscal deficit tomorrow uh you know in the next lecture we are going to spend half an hour only on fiscal deficit it is very important because in mains this is and in interview these are the things which are being asked but don't write this down this is just for understanding write this this is total expenses minus revenue receipts plus non debt creating capital receipts theek hai but is the logic clear of fiscal deficit now do you think do you think we can extract revenue deficit out of it do you think we can somehow work out revenue deficit out of it so you will forget this you will keep this isme se you will forget the capital expenditure what remains is revenue deficit minus revenue expenses minus revenue receipts is revenue deficit theek okay? hai so revenue deficit is always a sub part of fiscal deficit because that shows deficit between only your day to day kharcha and this is showing your total deficit khatam right now one i think i made a small mistake in the lecture when i am teaching now in the previous lecture i think i made a mistake just uh, kahan pe hai ha so this this grants na which is a non debt creating capital receipt because it does not create an obligation whether it be a grant by the central bank or the world bank to india or from indian union government to state governments and all this grant it just i just i don't know why i told you it comes here this grant does not come here this grant always comes under 
रेवेन्यू कहा गया रेवेन्यू रिसीट्स और रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंसिस सो इफ यू आर अ गिविंग यू आर गिविंग अ ग्रांट टू सम वन इट विल फॉल अंडर योर रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंसिस इफ यू आर रिसीविंग रिसीविंग अ ग्रांट फ्रॉम सम वन इट विल फॉल अंडर रेवेन्यू रिसीट्स सो ग्रांट्स आर ऑफ रेवेन्यू नेचर सर वॉट इज द लॉजिक बिहाइंड इट द लॉजिक बिहाइंड इट इज की ग्रांट्स आर गिवन फ्रीक्वेंटली एवरी ईयर बेस्ड ऑन फाइनेंस कमीशन रिकमेंडेशन सो ग्रांट्स आर रिकरिंग इन नेचर एंड ग्रांट्स आर स्मॉलर अमाउंट कंपेयर टू योर बजट साइज योर बजट साइज इज ट्रिलियन डॉलर उसमें से वन लैख डॉलर और टू लैख टू लैख डॉलर इफ यू गिव दट इज अ स्मॉल अमाउंट ठीक है आई डोंट नो वाई आई रोट यर द पॉइंट आई वॉज ट्राइंग टू मेक इज इट इज अ नॉन डेट क्रिएटिंग थिंग it is a non debt creating thing but it is not a capital receipt it is a revenue receipt so grants if you are giving grants it will fall under revenue expenses because you are giving if you are receiving grants if it, it will fall under revenue receipts because you are giving theek okay? hai so now answer uh, central government has given grants to states worth 10 lakh rupees how will state governments record it as revenue receipt and how will central government record it as revenue expenses okay there is no debt obligation attached to it but it is not capital in nature it is revenue in nature because this happens very frequently and because every year finance commission gives recommendations and plus if there is any uh, urgent need urgent need for states to uh, access funds then also central government has ready funds available okay so i i am very sorry for that i don't know why i wrote what i was thinking but in the flow i wrote here but it is grants now when i was teaching deficits is just click me ki i had i have written grants here so please make that change uh, i apologize for that because you know one mistake is also very costly in these uh, these conceptual parts because this is very conceptual there is nothing which is memory based here so grants i would say grants received and grants given you will get this ppt but uh, if you are writing this down then you can pause the video write it down theek okay? hai if you have not written then you can directly write grants here grants here instead of here and if you have written please 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 make this correction now only in your notes please remove grants from here but know that they are in the nature of non debt theek hai done disinvestment understood fiscal deficit understood revenue deficit understood very good now चलो वॉट डज फिजिकल डेफिसिट शो इफ आई टेल यू इफ आई टेल यू लास्ट इयर फिजिकल डेफिसिट वॉज फिफ्टीन लैख क्रोर दिस इयर फिजिकल डेफिसिट इज एटीन लैख क्रोर वॉट डज इट मीन टू यू वेन यू रीड दिस दिस डेटा और वेन यू रीड दिस सेंटेंसेस वॉट डू यू थिंक इट मीन्स फिजिकल डेफिसिट ऑफ लास्ट इयर वॉज फिफ्टीन लैख क्रोर फिजिकल डेफिसिट ऑफ sorry fiscal deficit of this year is 18 lakh crores what does it mean does it mean that last year government borrowed 15 lakh crores and this year government wants to borrow 18 lakh crores or does it mean something else it means last year government borrowed 15 lakh crores it shows the debt fiscal deficit shows the borrowings because remember in the formula we had not taken capital receipts which means all the existing borrowings which the government might have in our calculation we said ki no we don't have borrowings considering we don't have borrowings at all theek okay? hai so out of let's say 15 lakh crores government has already borrowed 2 lakh crores government has borrowed 2 lakh crores when it will go to the bank bank will say ki sir i have already given you 2 lakh crores i'll give you only 13 lakh crores now theek okay? hai in our calculation we want to wipe the set, slate clean we want to know ki kitna i am under how much of debt now whether i have borrowed already earlier or whether i want to borrow later that is a different thing that is just a timing difference theek okay? hai but for our calculation when we say fiscal deficit is going to be 25 lakh crores which means government is going to need 25 lakh crores finished theek okay? hai done now government has now government has three options either government can try to reduce this see when we were doing our formula we had said ki it cannot the but government can try to reduce this theek hai or government can try to increase this yes or no because this is receipt this is expenditure if government wants to borrow less are re if government wants to borrow less
right if government wants to borrow less what can it do how can you reduce your gap how can you reduce either you do kam kharcha simple or you earn more find ways of earning more now again we go back to the basics we want to do kam kharcha theek hai which means we have to reduce this we have to reduce this we are government we have to reduce this or we have to reduce this yes or no which is which one so if i ask you to give a priority which one you would prefer to reduce first this one or that one which one i i am telling you you can reduce only a limited amount let's say so which would you prefer to reduce this or that again think i told you you are only going to tell me i am not going to tell you readily think and tell even if we take one or two minutes it is fine but think and tell government is always constrained see both are required i am not saying one of them is not required both are essential bridge bhi banana hai salary bhi dena hai right but if government wants to reduce expenses because government wants to reduce fiscal deficit because government wants to borrow less now why government wants to borrow less and why it is bad we are going to see in the next lecture the debate on fiscal deficit is so important that we have to give time to it but if government has a priority of reducing something what do you think it will reduce capital or revenue what what would you think it will reduce just take just take 30 40 seconds and then tell me what do you think it will reduce revenue expenses or capital expenses and i want you to justify huh? see remember upsc always asks questions about justifying what do you think first red or second red kya hoga theek hai it will always try it will always try it will always try to reduce revenue expenses why it will always try to reduce revenue expenses because this is going to generate a lot of revenue in the future this is long term this is big amount but this is an asset after all this is an investment you cannot stop constructing bridges you will construct bridge and then after 10 years you will find that this which you invested now is contributing to this directly because its toll collection and all will come which will come here directly theek hai sir then what do you mean that we reduce subsidy and we reduce salaries we go for unemployment or not no but you reduce frivolous expenditure you reduce wasteful expenditure which means you rationalize have you heard the word rationalize rationalize your subsidies if you are giving 10 subsidies give only 4 which are required don't give 6 subsidies there are a lot of subsidies which are not required i hope you know people who are already very rich farmers who are rich they are also acquiring subsidies they are also using subsidies they are earning crores of rupees in a year and still they are using subsidies just imagine what is the sense in this so reduce those and this is also easier to do because you can identify subsidies right if you have if you have let's say an administration department wherein 50 people's job is required you know 50 people are required to run administration you see that there are 110 people working there what would you do you would give them other job opportunities or you will tell them please retire voluntary retirement happens you will give them a big package you will give them big amounts and you will tell them please find a job elsewhere that is what happens mtnl may be what same happened banking may same happens right you are trying to increase your efficiency what will you do ultimately you will reduce your revenue expenses so today you are paying 110 people salaries tomorrow you will pay 50 people salaries you will tell them ki okay fine uh, thank you for your services goodbye and uh, find another job right so this is how then same thing in defense in defense also you will find you will try to reduce your manpower you know extra manpower which is not required so we have a very high to teeth to tail ratio which means we have a very high uh, low level manpower low level hota hai na not the combat officers or not the ekdam low level 
those who do non combat work peons helpers all of that we have a lot of them not required not required we have a huge base of that then please fire them see we are in economics we are not going for social class so firing them is bad sir and all this is for this is very useful for social justice economically you have to reduce this you have to do it simple don't we do the same thing when we come to delhi or other places to study for upsc we cut down our expenses we save on fuel right we start using buses we have to do it there this is the only way see this you cannot do because this is an uh, investment even though money is stuck here for 5 10 years but this will give you rich reward this will give you uh, you know this will kick start your economy in the higher gear remember we want to go in the higher gear this will increase your output is it not making new factories making new machinery this will increase your gdp so this to you have to do this you cannot touch is may be you can reduce the unnecessary expenses let's say if a bridge can be constructed in 1 lakh crores then don't give 2 lakh crores for that bridge wo to hai inefficiency you have to reduce from everywhere but this is the first target do you agree with this yes no very good theek hai what would be the next step you know when we are doing this budgeting now you identified let's say some for example some states do not require grants why are you giving grants reduce the grants reduce revenue expenses already maharashtra andhra pradesh tamil nadu already they are very well do, they are doing very well off theek hai don't give them or give them less grants theek hai or let's say grants are being given to some states to set up industry theek hai maharashtra tamil nadu andhra pradesh don't require industry grants they require some other kind of grant so cut them off cut, cut short your revenue expenses that is the first step right the second step which comes is we'll see in the next lecture we'll stop here we'll see the second step in the next lecture i hope you know you know this is i am ending this episode on a cliffhanger सस्पेंस है ना कि आगे क्या होगा दैट इज वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू डू बट प्लीज टेल मी वॉट इज फिजिकल डेफिसिट विदाउट लुकिंग एट द फॉर्मुला वी डोंट नो द फॉर्मुला नाउ वॉट इज फिजिकल डेफिसिट फिजिकल डेफिसिट इज माई टोटल एक्सपेंस टोटल एक्सपेंस माइनस माई टोटल इनकम बट टोटल इनकम में वॉट डू आई टेक आई टेक माई रेवेन्यू रिसीट्स बिकॉज ये आई नो आई एम अर्निंग रेगुलरली एंड आई ऑल्सो टेक माई नॉन डेट क्रिएटिंग कैपिटल रिसीट्स बिकॉज आई नो आई हैव वॉन्ट दैट ठीक है आई एम नॉट टेकिंग डेट क्रिएटिंग बिकॉज दैट इज वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू फाइंड ki how much debt i have to take if i already include this and if it is zero then what is the point of taking so total expense minus your revenue receipts bracket mein plus your non debt creating capital receipts that will give you fiscal deficit what does it show what does it signify what does it uh, indicate it indicates that this much you have to borrow this much would be your debt creating capital receipt yes or no so let's say you took total expense this plus this minus this plus this yes or no you got 10 lakh rupees which means 10 lakh you will borrow when you borrow 10 lakh it will come to debt creating capital receipt yes don't you think it will balance out because your requirement is now fulfilled you had a deficit of 10 lakhs you got 10 lakhs from bank you wrote it here debt creating now it is zero your total uh, expenses minus total receipt is zero because you filled your deficit now any doubt okay you 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 calculated fiscal deficit you said ki i require 10 lakhs you went to bank you took 10 lakh rupees that 10 lakh rupees you can use for your expenses that 10 lakh rupees you will write it as debt creating capital receipts now when you take after writing here 10 lakhs when you take total of expense plus expense minus total of income plus income you will get 10 lakhs net amount would be zero because you have, now you don't have a deficit you have already borrowed now you don't have a deficit okay so that is uh, that is how governments function that is how uh governments borrow money government calculate fd fiscal deficit and they borrow money and that is how they work right now how much to borrow what to borrow what to do how to reduce the borrowing and all of that we saw a few steps first step is to cut down revenue cut down unproductive revenue expenditure unproductive capital expenditure priority goes to revenue because we have a lot of unnecessary revenue expenditure here we have a lot of corruption in capital expenditure here remember uh, so many movies are made on corruption of infrastructure sector so roads are being washed away and cheap quality material is being used in roads 500 crores worth of roads washed away in one monsoon so there is lot of corruption here so this is an inflated figure now so you have to cut down the corruption cut down the inefficiency cut down the unproductiveness and that is the first step next step we will see tomorrow or in the next lecture for you what is revenue deficit revenue deficit is only playing between these two things so revenue deficit mein you are calculating day to day mismatches yes or no 
डे टू डे डेली खर्चे के लिए हाउ मच एम आई इन डेफिसिट एंड फिजिकल डेफिसिट में यू कैलकुलेट ओवरऑल बोरोइंग्स सम ऑफ द बोरोइंग्स में बी यूज फॉर दिस सम ऑफ द बोरोइंग्स में बी यूज फॉर दिस ऑल्सो ठीक है वी विल कंटिन्यू इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड प्लीज अगेन आई रिपीट आस्क डाउट्स एंड ट्राई टू पे मोर अटेंशन एंड ट्राई टू ग्रास्प दिस कॉन्सेप्ट राइट आई सेव दिस पीपीटी एंड वी कैन शेयर दिस विथ यू ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच विल एंड यर आई सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर